Hunter Avalon is one YouTuber who I can say with a little bit of pride I have never had the displeasure of frequently watching. I've barely ever even watched him at all, to be honest. I've seen some interactions with him on Twitter, and I've seen a couple live streams that he was in, but for the most part, that's pretty much it. Over the past several months or so, he has gathered quite a bit of attention, because he became the token conservative for Vosh, the literal communist, and after not much time, Vosh managed to make him give up any pretense of being a conservative, and now he describes himself as neither left nor right. When he was a supposed conservative, his channel was the lowest form of the response video format. Now, I am doing one of those videos right now, so I can't insult that too much. But my point is, he was never really an intellectual heavyweight. Though, of course, who am I to criticize him for that? He has actually been quite honest in his former attraction to the right. He has said that it was primarily based on stuff like memes. That is, what is more properly referred to as the aesthetic. It was, of course, actually quite a good idea for him to abandon the right. I'm sure his position on YouTube will be very safe going forward, and from any utilitarian perspective, it will benefit him in a lot of ways now that he's basically a left-winger. Though, in this recent story of him abandoning the right, there's one really important key detail which I think is very often left out. That is, in 2017, still several years before he stopped calling himself a conservative, he announced that he was an atheist, having formerly been a Christian, again, at least nominally. Prior to apostatizing, he was socially conservative on all the issues that you would generally expect your standard American conservative to be socially conservative on. And the things that he's been most public about reversing since he has left the right are his stances on things like same-sex marriage and the transgender stuff, though he does still at least claim to be pro-life. What is especially, I don't know, notable? Comical? is that on these social issues, he has now claimed that since, of course, apostatizing, the real Christian position is the socially liberal position. He has done the research, and he has determined in his vast wisdom that 2,000 years of Christianity are totally wrong on this point, and that all the verses normally cited in the Bible are only referring to non-consensual activity. Now, as I've said many times before, this isn't a theology channel. I'm not going to go into the specifics of proving that these verses do mean what they've always been interpreted to mean. The thing that really made me want to make this video was a tweet he sent out recently. A tweet which encapsulates his new position on what Christianity and what Jesus is really about as a liberal atheist. I'm not going to read it out. There really isn't any point. It's the absolute most standard, boring, liberal Jesus meme that you've seen a million times before from leftists, usually leftist atheists, usually, at best, leftist nominal Christians. Though, of course, as I have discussed previously, this position, though you normally hear it parroted by atheists and nominal Christians, is actually the official ideology of several major Western churches, such as the United Church of Canada or the Episcopalian Church in the U.S. There isn't really any point of me going through point by point and debunking with facts and logic this stupid tweet from Hunter Avalon. But what is much more interesting is to analyze this phenomena of liberal Christianity, and more specifically, the liberal Jesus that many atheists claim is the real Jesus. Most of the arguments for this supposed liberal Jesus are pretty bad, in my opinion. It usually boils down to something like, Jesus did not just directly throw all sinners straight into hell, and instead he told them to go forth and sin no more. Therefore, he approves of all sin? I don't know. But that's not really what I want to get at. What I really want to get at here is, what's the root of this? 
What makes people, both atheists and Christians, or at least supposed Christians, believe that it's possible that all of Christianity has been entirely wrong about who Jesus was and what the real Christian moral teachings were for 2,000 years? The answer to this, I believe, goes directly back to the Protestant Reformation 500 years ago. Now, this isn't necessarily a shocking statement from me. It is almost a cliché in conservative Catholic circles that modern progressivism is directly a descendant of the Reformation. And Mencius Moldbug, of course, makes a very similar analysis in his claim that progressivism directly comes from New England Puritanism, and is essentially a secularized form of it. With that said, saying that progressivism is an intellectual descendant of Protestantism does not at all mean that Protestantism is wrong. Protestantism itself is of course a descendant of Catholicism, and I of course believe that Protestantism is wrong. It would obviously be ridiculous to conclude from that 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 means that Catholicism is wrong. And perhaps one of the strongest arguments against the connection between Protestantism and progressivism is the fact that, in a certain sense, many of the original Protestant movements appeared to be highly reactionary. From a 2020 viewpoint, many people look back at, say, the Middle Ages, and they will describe it as, say, puritanical. Now, for one, such a statement, a statement which I've heard many people make over my lifetime, is ridiculous on religious grounds, since the Puritans were as far removed from Catholicism as you can get, while still being within Christianity. But, of course, when people say stuff like the Middle Ages were puritanical, what they mean by that is that it had very strict social standards. In one sense, this is true, I suppose. If you compare the modern sexual culture to the Middle Ages, the Middle Ages certainly were far stricter, but that's because it's really hard to get any point in human history which is not far stricter than contemporary society. Even places like ancient Rome or Greece, which progressives erroneously claim as having had enlightened progressive sexual morals, would be considered incredibly strict by modern standards. But if we are to not compare everything to the current year, post-Reformation societies were quite a bit more strict than the Middle Ages ever were. Where you can see this very clearly is the Canterbury Tales got away with far more than what you could expect to be published in a post-Reformation England. But despite that fact, that in many cases the Reformation produced, for at least a period, highly socially conservative societies, when I talk about the connection between progressivism and Protestantism, I am not saying that Protestantism directly resulted in societies that have the sorts of issues that we have with progressivism. What I am saying is certain ideas started by the Protestant Reformation and spread by the Reformation have, as their logical endpoint, certain major aspects of progressivism. And the particular idea that I would like to discuss today is sola scriptura. Sola scriptura is, of course, one of the foundational beliefs of almost all forms of Protestantism. It is the belief that Scripture alone is the sole infallible rule of faith. Defenders of Scripture alone will normally say that it does not mean that traditions are not important, and that tradition cannot be a guide to how Scripture should be interpreted. But, at the end of the day, all that matters is how well those traditions line up with Scripture itself. This initial definition of sola scriptura may not sound incredibly radical, and it may even sound like it gives a significant amount of deference to tradition. However, actually just looking at the history of the Reformation and Protestantism, even prior to the explicitly progressive Protestant churches, what we see is very different. Many core Protestant beliefs simply cannot be found in the pre-1517 Christian tradition. This either means that the Protestants are wrong, or the pre-1517 tradition is wrong. 
there is no specific issue that shows this better than that of baptismal regeneration, that is, the idea that your sins are literally washed away at baptism. On this topic of baptismal regeneration, Zwingli, who was one of the founders of the Reformed tradition, said, I can only conclude that all the doctors have been in error from the time of the apostles. The denial of baptismal regeneration is standard among most Protestants, though, of course, there are some who still accept the doctrine. And this one example shows quite clearly that for most Protestants, that is, for most adherents of sola scriptura, tradition is really not given any deference at all when it comes into conflict with one's interpretation of scripture. From that, it's not quite as difficult to see where the logical leap is from denying baptismal regeneration, which all Christians believed in for 1,500 years, to denying the traditional Christian sexual ethic, which all Christians believed in for 2,000 years. When groups like the Episcopalian Church in America or the United Church of Canada say that they are not actually redefining the Christian teaching on sexuality, but they are just rediscovering what it really is. They are really right in that same Reformed tradition. They are right there with Zwingli when he said that he can only conclude that everyone before him was wrong. This is the sola scriptura mindset. This is what we see every time a liberal says that Jesus was actually a liberal socialist. But what makes this mindset so interesting is we don't see this just in matters of religion. We see this in many elements of modern progressivism. Whenever some hippie says that libertarian socialism is the real communism, and when they say that real communism has never been tried, what they are saying is all the actual communists that have existed from Marx until now that have ever actually implemented their systems have just been totally wrong, and that they can only conclude that everyone always has been wrong about communism until now. Thanks for watching this video. Please donate to my Patreon or Subscribestar if you enjoy this content. I have just launched a new donor exclusive podcast, which will be monthly. You can listen to it on either Subscribestar or Patreon for a donation as small as $1. And please like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell, and share these videos with anyone who you think will enjoy them. And a special thanks to my donors, yourself, Siphius Rex, Lita, Adzutko, Quo Pregranator, Josiah, King of Evil Florida and the Moon, Seth Apex, Richard, Cringewalker, Zian Harris, Thomas, Thomas, Windowlick, and Augustine. Thank you everyone very much again for watching, and goodbye.